What's good YouTube and for today's video I got a very exciting video for y'all today. Today I'm going to be showing y'all that it doesn't take high expensive gear to make a cinematic video that you can literally do it with your phone. Let's get right into this video. Before we get right into this video y'all make sure to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications to not miss the content coming to you in 2024 and I hope y'all enjoy. So for today's video we are going to be trying to create some cinematic footage with my iPhone. Yes, you heard that right, a phone. Obviously the phones have been evolving over time, especially the camera quality, which is the main upgrade of each phone. The phone quality is always something that's been upgraded over time on each phone. Today we're going to be testing the ability of what a phone can do and if it could create cinematic footage. Now of course a phone and a camera are two different things and they literally go for the same price, but of course the camera is mainly focused on the actual image quality. A phone has multiple features, you can do anything on it, messages, etc. You get what I mean. But for the price point, the camera quality, I was actually surprised for how some of the footage came out. It was actually really great. The low light capabilities as well and even the raw output that it has, especially I believe on the iPhone 14 and up. I forgot what this is. I think this is the latest iPhone, but I forgot if we're in the 15th or the 14th. I went downtown in my local area to film some footage and I was thinking like, what kind of footage am I going to get? What, what am I going to try to aim for to make it cinematic? Now, I believe I talked in this video about it, about it. It doesn't take like a really beautiful scenery to create cinematic or vintage footage. Sometimes it can be a dirty look. Sometimes a dirty setting can give you a, a beautiful cinematic look. Just from the perspective of the eye, think of it as an antique. An antique is only special because it's old, because it has that old look. And that goes for cinematic footage as well. It can have the antique look, or it can have that modern new look. And I told her, well, that's what makes things cinematic. Because if you, it's, you don't always need a beautiful setting for some certain things. There's some times where like, because can you imagine this? If Batman, which is my favorite superhero, if Batman was a superhero in a in a very clean city and it wasn't a dirty city would he still be batman would he still be have that reputation of him being the dark knight like school hero no he would need a dirty city that's antique looking that's kind of like i don't know that just gives you that vibe of him being there to be the light of that city so that's what makes him look cinematic through the city through, and that's that's what makes him look cinematic through setting wise so it doesn't always have to be like a clean shot a clean setting it can be a a dirty setting, it'll add that vintage cinematic look. I try to find some nice areas, of course, but I also try to find some very dirty settings as well. I went to a couple locations. I went to a church, parks. I went to anything around that area that caught my eye specifically. I try to go during the golden hour of the day. I got there right before golden hour, but it was so stressful to find parking. I believe this goes for any downtown. It's super stressful to find parking. We did get the golden hour look a little bit, but there was a cloud that was blocking the sun mid golden hour, so we didn't get as much golden hour shots. But I kind of liked it because what what clouds do for you and in a way it's like literally a diffuser a cloud is a if you have sunlight with a giant cloud it can act as a huge diffuser and that's exactly what it did in some shots it did give it that nice white calm tone onto some of the shots that i did but i filmed a lot of led shots i've also filmed so probably a little a couple of food shots in there to give it to, to add some some spice into it colors on the iphone is a they have great colors i like the colors on it but it doesn't it's not as enhanced as an actual camera, of course. And of course, the low light capabilities is not as is not as well as other cameras. And for being a phone, it actually it's really great. It's really great. Um, I shot this in RAW. The phone comes with the capability of you changing it to RAW and go into the camera settings and and you can have ability to change it to RAW. And of course, the RAW helps you out a lot more when you go into edit and post and you want to color grade it. But the only thing about this is that it does take up a lot of space. Um, on recording video for the RAW, it does huge uh, file size for sure i was filming one final shot and it said your your, your storage was full you know i don't use my phone for uh taking videos or anything I, I only did it for this video i wanted to get it to the max capability of it and it took up my space it has some great features for it just for it being a phone it comes with 4k 24 frames per second it can go all the way to 60 frames per second if you want to go to slow-mo it has a cinematic mode which i love because you can change the aperture on it. it starts from f2 all the way to f16 that's awesome and you can zoom, you can zoom in really far. I literally, you can on, only on the video mode, the cinematic mode, you can't really zoom in as much in times, which is really good. And it does add like a little, like a little extra image in, in the corner, in the corner of the, of the phone. And it shows what it's capturing and how it can make it great quality. 
it's just it's really great features can it just the exposure some people just don't set their exposure to a perfect exposure to what the scene fits like some people might have it too bright some people might have it too dark you got to get it to a point where the shadows even out with everything out with the light that's definitely something that that made more of the footage cinematic i knew the exposure on what the certain shot needed it just came out really great wait <laughs> The footage came out really great. Uh, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the footage as well. I like. I would like to hear your thoughts if y'all thought it was cinematic, cinematic or is not as cinematic as a camera. Of course, the camera has more features than an actual phone. Do y'all think quality is great for being a phone? Do y'all think it can compare to other cameras? Or do y'all think it just matters on, on who's using the camera? You can give somebody that doesn't know, that doesn't know nothing about cameras and they're not really into this field and you can give them a very expensive camera, but they don't know how to use it. You compare somebody giving them a very cheap camera and they know what to do with it and they know how to how to make it look great to the best capability possible. Which person do you think will outperform who? The person with the higher budget or the person that knows what they're doing? I believe as long as the person knows what they're doing and knows how to set a shot perfectly to the best capability of what the cam of what camera they are holding, then that's how they can make it look really great. Overall, I'm very satisfied with his performance, surprisingly, but it killed it. Definitely a D cam because I have my A cam, my B cam, and my B my C cam is my BTS cam. Definitely, if anything happens, let's say I run out of batteries on any shoot, this is the D cam. <laughs>